Scientific notation is a mathematical strategy for rewriting incredibly large numbers or incredibly small numbers in a more efficient way. And scientific notation makes use of exponents on 10. Now let's talk about what, what happens with tens and hundreds and thousands and how we can rewrite them using exponents and that kind of thing. This is just kind of a backdrop for uh, writing numbers in scientific notation. We'll get to that in just a minute. We know that 10 is really 10 to the 1 power in terms of exponents. 100 is 10 squared, 1,000 is 10 cubed, and 10,000 is 10 to the 4th power. And it's important to realize that the exponent here on 10 corresponds with the number of zeros that follow the 1 over here. All right, that's one idea. Another idea is that when we multiply by powers of 10, it's just a sliding of the decimal point. 5.2 times 10 means we slide the decimal point one place over to get 52. And we're sliding the decimal point one place because we have one zero following the one. You see, that's, that's the, the idea. And for 10 squared, really we have two zeros following the one. You see, this really means 100. So when we multiply 5.2 times 10 squared or 100, we move the decimal point two places to the right. So it becomes 520. And here, 10 cubed is 1,000. We have three zeros following the one, and therefore we move the decimal point three to the right. And we just move according to the exponent on 10. So we're moving this decimal three places to the right to give us 5,200. And if the exponent is four, move the decimal four over to get this. All right, now we're ready to rewrite numbers in scientific notation. We're going to just, just reverse this process. We're going to say, all right, let's take this number and write it like this. This is the scientific notation form for 52,000. And the, the way the process works is like this. We start with this big number, and now we want to write it in, in a form which is a number which is between 1 and 10 times 10 to some unknown exponent. So we have a couple of things to identify over here. Now, here's how we, we go about doing that. We take the decimal that is understood to be right here, and we slide it over one, two, three, four places. You see, so we're going to write this number as 5.2. We slide the decimal over to a position where there's only one digit to the left of the decimal. That's why I put it right here, 5.2. Now times 10 to what exponent? That is, 5 times 2 times 10 to what exponent will give this? In order to accomplish taking this number and sliding the decimal, how many places over? Oh, 1, 2, 3, 4. In order to accomplish sliding this decimal 4 over to the right, we need a 4 as the exponent on 10. So that's the idea. We just write an exponent corresponding with the number of digits over which we slid the decimal. Let's practice on a couple of problems. 240,000. Well, to write this in scientific notation, we slide the decimal to a position where there's one digit to the left of the decimal, and that's the position where we have 2.4. So it's 2.4 times 10 to some exponent. Now, what's the exponent? All we have to do is count the digits. From here, we slid the decimal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the exponent on 10 is 5. Now we can verify that this is the scientific notation form for that number by changing it back. That is, we can think, well, gee, what is this, you see, in sort of an expanded form? Well, if we take 2.4 and multiply times 10 to the fifth, we would have to slide this decimal 5 to the right, and we would certainly get that number. All right, 93 million. This is kind of a favorite in using scientific notation because it's, it's the distance in miles from the Earth to the Sun. But here's how it works. We slide that decimal to a position where there's one digit to the left of the decimal point. So we'll have 9.3 times 10 to some exponent. And the exponent is identified by just counting digits. 3, 6, 7. 9.3 times 10 to the 7. Now, in this scientific notation process, sometimes you'll face problems where you want to put this big number into scientific notation, or you'll see a number in scientific notation and you'll want to write its expanded form. We have to be able to do both. And here, I, the number is in scientific notation. We want to write it in, in uh, expanded form. No big deal. 6.5 times 10 to the fourth, multiplying by 10 and powers of 10, just slides a decimal 
some number of positions to the right. And in this case, it's four positions. So it's six, five, zero, zero, zero. I have to slide this decimal one, two, three, four to the right. Now, another way to look at it, let me, let me overemphasize this just a little bit. It is, we're taking 6.5 and we're sliding the decimal four to the right. One, two, three, four. That's really what we're doing. The decimal ends up here and we need placeholders for these values. So it turns out to be 65,000 for the number. Here, the same idea. We're just taking this decimal and sliding it seven to the right. So I can begin the process by saying, okay, I have a two. Now the next digit is a zero or seven, and then I follow with some zeros. And I'm moving the decimal point from here. I'm moving seven to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I might count back and put some commas in here. So here's the number in sort of an expanded form. Now, all of the numbers we've been talking about so far have been very, very big numbers. We're going to talk now about some small numbers, but that is numbers that are like .00000025 or something like that. Very, very small, very, very tiny values. And as a backdrop for that, we have to learn about another uh, kind of exponent on 10. And, and take a look at this pattern. We, have, we know that 10,000 is 10 to the fourth power. Okay, we established that over here, and we've seen it before. And 1,000 is 10 cubed, and 100 is 10 squared, and 10 is just 10 to the 1 power. Well, look at the pattern here. L look at how numbers in, on the left side of these equal signs are generated. If I take this number and divide by 10, I get that one. If I take 1,000 and divide by 10, I get 100. Divide this by 10, and I get 10. Now, so what I'm doing here for each succeeding number is I'm dividing by 10. If I take 10 and divide by 10, I'll get 1. And then after that, if I, if I take 1 and divide by 10, I get 1 tenth. You see? So, and, and if I take 1 tenth and divide by 10, I'll get 1 over 100. All right. So that's, that's how the pattern continues. Now, what about the pattern over here with the exponents? We have 4, 3, 2, 1. Gee, the exponent on 10 is just decreasing by 1 in each, uh, in each case. Decrease 1 by 1. You see, 1 minus 1, oh, that would be 10 to the 0. And decrease this by 1. You see, 1 less than 0, oh, that's a negative 1. And then 1 less than this, oh, that's negative 2. You see, so it turns out that negative exponents are possible, and this is what they mean when they apply to 10. Now, we're not going to talk about negative exponents very generally right here, but, but only very specifically as they apply to 10. And in another math course, you'll be talking about negative exponents quite extensively. But right here, it's just the idea that 10 to the negative 1 means 1 over 10, 1 tenth. And 10 to the negative 2 means 1 over 10 squared, you see, or 1 over 100. And, and maybe it's, it's a good idea for me to write in here that this is really 1 over 10 squared. Now, just compare these two. Just look at those two a moment. 10 to the negative 2 means 1 over 10 squared, you see? So <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, it's the idea that a negative exponent implies that the base of the exponent should really be in a denominator, you see? If, it's, if this is in a numerator to begin with, and it is, it's in, in an implied numerator of... 10 to the negative 2 over 1, then we could slide it down into the denominator to give us a positive exponent. All right, so that, that's a little strategy. But here's how it applies to scientific notation. <clears throat> if we have 5.2 times 10 to the negative 1, with just what we learned a moment ago, 10 to the negative 1 really means 1 tenth. 1 tenth means divide by 10. So I could think of this as... 5.2 divided by 10, because this rascal right here is 1 tenth, and if I'm multiplying this by 1 tenth, you see, and then I get 5.2 over 10, so it's 5.2 divided by 10. And we're not going to write all of this every single time we have a problem. I don't want you to think that, that this is that confusing. But I just want to show you the interpretation of the negative exponent idea. We need that idea of interpretation in order to understand how the decimal is sliding. And that's all that's going to be 
that there is to this whole process. It's just sliding the decimal point, and it's going to be very similar to what we did earlier, but just in a different direction. All right, so it's the notion that this means the same thing as that, and we know from experience that if we're dividing by 10 or 100 or 1,000, it's just a matter of sliding the decimal to the left. So here, this becomes 0 0.52. This decimal slides one to the left. Now, we can see this, if we understand, if we buy into the idea that these mean the same thing, then we really don't need to write this every time. You see, we don't have to write this. We can just understand that this means to divide by 10. It means, when we have a negative exponent, to slide the decimal south, you see, to the left. So here, 5.2 times 10 to the negative 3. It means 5.2 divided by 10 cubed you see, or a thousand, and dividing by 10 or 100 or a thousand moves the decimal to the left. So this decimal moves three to the left, one, two, three, boom, we need a couple of placeholders. But generally, we're not going to write this step, we're just going to have this. Now, and, and from here, we would say well, we're multiplying by 10 to the negative three. That means we're going to move the decimal point here to the left. If it were cubed, we'd move it to the right. But it's negative 3, we move it to the left. You see, so that's the idea. Now, what I've done here what, in these problems, I've taken a number in scientific notation, and I have actually written it in its expanded form. But writing numbers in scientific notation means to take a form like this and to write it like that. So, and, and think about that just with this little problem. We would, from this, we would take this decimal, and move it to a position where we have one digit to the left of the decimal. So we're going to move it one, two, three, you see, over to the right. We're going to put it right here. So we would write 5.2 and then times 10 to some exponent. Well, what exponent? Well, since we move the decimal one, two, three places, there's a three involved in it. But notice the direction that we're moving that, that rascal, that in order for 5.2, to become a number that's this small, we have to be dividing by, you see, uh, 10 to the third power. And dividing by 10 to the third power is the same thing as multiplying by 10 to the negative 3. So that's how we, we go about the strategy. Suppose we want to write this number in scientific notation. Uh, the question arises when, when students go about this operation is whether or not to use uh, positive or negative exponents. When do we need to use those negative exponents? And here's the key. When you're dealing with really, really big numbers like we were earlier, then it's a positive exponent on 10 when you use the scientific notation, when you put it into scientific notation form. But when the number is incredibly little like we have here, then the exponent on 10 is going to be negative. And the, the digit associated with that negative number is just found by counting uh, the number of digits over which the decimal was moved. So we would go about the process like this. We would say, well, let's see, we have an incredibly small number here, so we know we're going to have a negative exponent on 10. But the decimal point is going to move to the position uh, between 4 and 7. So this is 4.7 times 10 to some negative exponent. Now, what is it? It's Let's see, one, two, three, four. We move this rascal four positions, so it's negative four. Now, we can verify the situation. We can kind of work backwards here and say, suppose we want to change this into its expanded form like that. What would we do here? Well, multiplying by 10 to the negative four is the same thing as dividing by 10 to the fourth. Dividing by 10 to the fourth, oh, move that decimal four to the left, and we get that. You see, so that's the idea. Now, let's go through it one more time. We're going to move this decimal to the position between the 1 and the 5. So it's 1.5 times 10 to some negative exponent because we're dealing with such a little number. And uh, let's see, what's that uh, digit that follows the minus sign? It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here's the scientific notation form. Now, it's important to be able to work both ways. If we start out with 6.8 times 10 to the negative 10, then a negative exponent on 10 implies that it's a really little number. So we're taking this decimal that is in 6.8 and we're moving it to a position that'll make a really little number. You see, we are dividing by 10 to the 10th. The exponent on 10 is 10, so we're moving the decimal point 10 to the left. So 
we have the digits 6 and 8, and I'm going to put them way over here because I want enough space to have those other digits. I'm starting out right here, and I want to go 10 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Boom! And one digit to the left of that decimal, and here is the number in uh, expanded form. Now let's go back the other way. Let's do it one more time the other way. You see it's important to be able to get our head into each different different process that we see here. We see a really little number, so we know we're going to have a negative exponent on 10. We're going to move this decimal point to the position between the 4 and the 7. So we have 4.75 times 10 to some negative exponent. And what is it? Let's see, from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. So 10 to the negative ninth. This next example involves the most often made mistake in using exponents. And I'll, give you, I'll show you two examples next to one another. Look at these two at the same time. Now they're both read the same way, negative 4 squared, negative 4 squared. Now, the, but the, the difference is the use of parenthesis and it's very important to interpret these correctly. You know exponents tell us the number of times that a base is used as a factor, and the base of this exponent is actually negative 4 because of the parenthesis. So this means that we have two factors of negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 signs are the same. We get a positive result. 4 times 4 is 16. But in this one, the base of the exponent is only the 4, not the minus sign. You see, that's not included. It's, it's kind of as though Without the parenthesis, this minus sign could drift off to the left here. It could kind of go over here, and we could even think of this as the negative of 4 squared. You see, only the 4 is squared in this circumstance. So this is minus 4 times 4, you see, or minus 4 times 4 is 16. So this is negative 16 for the result. So here's a situation to be careful of. Here's another dilemma, another situation that we have to kind of deal with. 2 plus 3 times 4. Now, I've written the problem twice here because there are really two ways to interpret this. One person might say, well, gee, working left to right, 2 plus 3 is 5, and then 5 times 4 would be 20. And somebody else would say, well, gee, in this same problem, I think I'll multiply 3 times 4 first and get 2 plus 3 times 4 is 12. 12 and 2 is 14. Now, which one is right, the 14 or the 20? Well, we need some agreement. We need to agree on how we're going to deal with operations in circumstances like this. And it is for that reason that we have what's called an order of operations agreement. And because we're all involved in math, we all agree to this agreement. And the agreement says that here's how we prioritize operations within a mathematical expression. We perform operations in parenthesis first. Anything, any parenthesis that has operations inside of it, we look in that parenthesis and we do that first. Next, we look to see if there are exponents to deal with in the problem. Can we raise bases to exponents somewhere? That's what we look for. And after that, we perform multiplications and divisions from left to right. And after that, we perform addition and subtraction from left to right. Now, because in this agreement, the multiplications and divisions from left to right take precedence over the additions and subtractions, let's go back over here and look at this problem. All right, if there are no other indicators, if there's no indication of what to do first, and there isn't here, parenthesis would help us decide, you see, if there were a parenthesis, but we don't see parenthesis here. So what we're supposed to do here when we see both addition and multiplication, the order of operations agreement says to perform multiplications and divisions from left to right. So multiplications and divisions means we would do this, you see, before we do that. So this then is the, the way that we're supposed to work this problem. All right, now you might be thinking, well, gee, how can I remember all of this? Well, there are a few techniques to remember this order of operations agreement. I'm going to emphasize the idea that parenthesis means do me first, and your attention goes directly to wherever the parenthesis may be indicated in the problem. All right, so that kind of gets you into the flow of the order of operations agreement. 
But there's another technique to, to remember how this goes, and it's kind of an interesting one, and it's been around for a long time, but consider the P here and the E, or the EX here, and the M and the D, and the A for addition and the S for subtraction. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And it gives you a way to remember this in the proper order. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally for the order of operations agreement. Consider this problem. It involves a few of the items in the order of operations agreement. Now, I'm looking at, as you just look at the problem from afar, it looks like there is an awful lot to do, and there is. But the parenthesis should draw you into the, that part of the problem. You should be drawn right in here, ignoring everything else. So parenthesis says, do me first. Do that first. So we're working in here. And, and it's as though this were a separate problem. This is our only problem right now, and everything else is just going to tag along. So we're going to deal with this. Now we're collecting uh, fractions, so we need a common denominator. The common denominator is 4. So this is 1 fourth minus, well, let's see, what is this? 2 into 4 goes 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So this is 1 fourth minus 2 fourths. Now, I'll bring down all of the other items. And don't forget to bring these down. We want to bring down items step by step. Don't leave anything behind thinking that you're going to bring it down when you need it. No. We want to bring down, we want this expression and each one in succession to be equivalent to the one before. All right. Now, 1 fourth minus 2 fourths <coughs> is 1 minus 2 fourths. Bring down all this other business. And 1 minus 2, oh, that's negative 1. So this is negative 1 fourth squared divided by 3 eighths. And now, squaring negative 1 fourth. You see, we have done everything we can within parentheses. We have simplified as much as possible within the parenthesis. Now we look at the overall problem to decide what to do next. And we take care of the exponent next. The exponent is on this base of negative 1 fourth. So it means we have two factors of negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth times negative 1 fourth. Negative times negative is positive. 1 fourth times 1 fourth, we can imagine it. You see, having two factors of 1 fourth, multiplying straight across, we would have 1 for the numerator and 4 times 4 is 16 for the denominator. So this then becomes 1 16th. And now we bring down this other business. Okay, so we have 1 16th divided by 3 eighths. Well, we've seen this enough before to where we know that we change the sign to times, flip over that second fraction, and multiply. Now the 8 and the 16 can cancel. 8 and 8, 1. 8 and the 16, 2. Multiplying straight across, 1 times 1, 1, and 2 times 3, 6. So 1 sixth is our answer. Take a look at this one. And by the way, as we come upon uh, problems, and I, I mentioned this a while back, and I, and I want to reiterate it here, is that um, on the video, when, when you see problems come up on video, if you feel like it, and I would like for you to feel like it, if you feel comfortable doing so, write the problem down on a piece of paper, stop the videotape, try the problem on your own, and then roll the tape to verify your answer. It just gives you a little more practice. Uh, and, and practice is the key item in becoming successful with all of this stuff. All right, so here we have a number of operations indicated, and uh, we see that uh, in parenthesis we have negative 2. Now, our order of operations agreement says to go directly to the parenthesis first. It means do me first. We look in this parenthesis, and we don't see anything to do. You see, this is already in simple form, what's inside the parenthesis. Then we look for exponents. There aren't any of those. So now the order of operations agreement says that we perform multiplications and divisions from left to right. Well, from left to right, we see this division. So we are taking the number to the left and dividing by the number to the right. Now, <clears throat> there are two ways to correctly interpret this situation. Some, someone will say, this is 4 divided by negative 2. Someone else will say, well, I want to uh, think of it as negative 4 divided by negative 2. And you know what? Either one of those is okay. In fact, let's do it both ways to verify the idea. We have, if we interpret it like this, as 4 divided by negative 2, then here's what we would do. <clears throat> 8 minus. Now, I'm just bringing this part down and thinking of it like this. 
So 4 divided by negative 2. Positive divided by negative is negative. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this is negative 2 for the result of that division. Now, what is, what is this? Well, we can think of it in a, in a couple of ways. This is the opposite of negative 2. Or subtraction can be interpreted as adding the opposite. So this really means 8 plus 2. Now, another way to think about it is like this, is that parenthesis means to multiply. It implies multiply when we have something like this. If it were 4 times 5, we could indicate 4 times 5 like this. So why doesn't parenthesis indicate multiplication here? Well, we can interpret it as meaning that by thinking of this, that <clears throat> there's no number here, you see, to the left of the, of the parenthesis, but we can think that there is an understood 1 there associated with this minus sign. So this is really negative 1 times negative 2. Oh, that's positive 2. You see, just another way to think about it if we want to. I kind of like this way of, of dealing with the situation because it, it rather than think about subtraction means adding the opposite, we can think of parenthesis as always meaning to multiply. And if there's no number there, just pop in a 1, you see? So anyway, a lot of ways to do it. 8 and 2, 10 for the result. Now, let's, let's go through it another, another way. Now, remember, we said that we were, we were doing it like this. We were interpreting this part of it as 4 divided by negative 2. But another way to interpret it is like this. That just bring down the 8 and then interpret it this way as negative 4 divided by negative 2. Negative divided by negative is positive, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now we have 8 plus 2, or 10. Okay, get to the same result either way, and they're both right. Here's another one. The order of operations agreement says to look inside parenthesis. Now in this parenthesis, we're already in simple form. In this parenthesis, we can simplify a bit, and let's do that. We have 12 minus the negative 10, and then divided by, and in parenthesis, 8 minus 3 would be 5. So we have this. 